Next, let's bring in exclusively former Vice President Mike Pence. Mr. Vice President, thank you for being here. Let's go right into bet, what is happening on the floor of the House of Representatives, this vote. Uh, and you heard in Chad Perkins reporting there a Ukrainian, Victoria Sparts. I interviewed her in Kiev shortly after the war broke out, and now she sounds like she may be going soft on even supporting Ukraine aid. What do you make of what we're watching unfold today? Griff, let me be very clear. Um, America is the leader of the free world. Two years ago, Russia engaged in an unprovoked war of invasion uh, into Ukraine that's cost hundreds of thousands of Ukrainian lives. Uh, six months ago, Hamas engaged in the worst attack on the Jewish people since the Holocaust. And just uh, seven days ago, Iran uh, took the unprecedented action of launching an attack against Israel itself. I think this is a moment that demands American strength. And I really want to commend Speaker Mike Johnson uh, for providing what I, I honestly think, Griff, is what you're witnessing here is moral courage. You're, you're seeing a leader, you're seeing a majority of Republicans in the House and many Democrats that are willing to say, we're gonna, we're gonna put aside personal interests, we're gonna put aside political interests, and we're gonna embrace America's role in the world. And uh, let me also say, you know, to be honest with you, I, I think Speaker Mike Johnson did a better job uh, in the last two days explaining America's interest in supporting the Ukrainian military than Joe Biden has done in the last two years. I mean, I, I think the reason why we have and should continue to support the Ukrainian military in their fight against Russian aggression is because I have no doubt in my mind uh, that if Vladimir Putin overruns Ukraine, that it'll just be a matter of time before he crosses a border uh, that our men and women in uniform are going to have to go and fight. So uh, I, I'm, I'm pleased to see the House moving this legislation. It's not a perfect bill. Nothing that ever moves through the Congress is, as I learned in all of my years hmm. on Capitol Hill. But I, I'm grateful to see uh, I'm grateful to see the legislation moving forward to renew our commitment to providing American leadership on the world stage. How concerned are you, Mr. Vice President, about this motion to vacate that Marjorie Taylor Greene put forward? Now two more Republicans, Thomas Massey and Paul Gosar, are supporting it. Looks very much like this could indeed uh, come to pass. Uh, how concerned are you that that, that is going to be uh, detrimental to, to really not only the Republican Party in the House, but, but really to Congress and how Washington works? Well, I, I, honestly, going all the way back to when the group that I call the Chaos Caucus uh, partnered with all the Democrats in Congress to throw out the last Speaker of the House, it's, I, I must tell you, for all of my years serving on Capitol Hill, my years as Vice President, it's just, it's incomprehensible uh, to me that, that people are, uh, are stepping forward to use this motion to vacate the way they are. But look, it's, it's there, it's under the rules. And I, I, again, I think it emphasizes the moral courage that Speaker Mike Johnson is showing here. He literally has said uh, that he is going to do what he believes is right for the country and right for the free world uh, and let the cards fall where they may. But my, my hope is that the motion to vacate is not brought, uh, but that if it is, uh, at, at the end of the day, that uh, the, uh, the uh, virtually every Republican in the Congress and maybe even a few Democrats will see their way through this caucus uh, and Mike Johnson will be able to continue to serve the country with the integrity and distinction that he's uh, reflecting today. Let me just, I, I want to get to an op-ed you wrote in the New York Times today about former President Donald Trump uh, betraying the pro-life movement. But I want to ask you one last question about what we're watching on the House floor, and that is the criticism that they say House Republican leadership says that we must pass these important issues, as you laid out, Israel, Ukraine, but yet nothing on border security. Is that acceptable? Well, look, what's not acceptable is that Joe Biden has weakened this country at home and abroad. I mean, the policies, Griff, that you know our administration put into effect at the southern border literally uh, ended illegal immigration. Uh, reduced it by 90 percent. Joe Biden undid policies like remain in Mexico uh, and, uh, and Title 42 that, that gave us the tools necessary to secure the border. And it's been Joe Biden who's refused to close the border, refused to use the authority that he has 
uh, and frankly, the Democrats' unwillingness to work in good faith with Republicans to address the worst border crisis in history that, uh, that I think should be a source of great frustration for Americans. But it, it's no excuse for us not to meet this moment on the world stage. Look, people that say we have to choose between securing our border, reviving our economy, and being leader of the free world, I, I, I think have a pretty small view of the greatest nation on earth. We, we've done both uh, for the last 75 years. Uh, and with the right leadership uh, at both ends of Pennsylvania Avenue, we can do it again. I want to talk about your piece today. You are tough on your former boss. In the New York Times, the headline, Donald Trump has betrayed the pro-life movement. In it, you write this. Now, not only is Mr. Trump retreating from that position, meaning the position of supporting the 15-week uh, ban. He is leading other Republicans astray. One recent example is in an Arizona Republican running for the U.S. Senate who followed Trump's lead and pledged to oppose a federal ban on late-term abortions. When our leaders aren't firmly committed to life, others will waver too. Courage inspires imitation. So does weakness. Are you suggesting the former president is now showing weakness? Well, I have to tell you, I couldn't be more proud to have been vice president in the most pro-life administration in American history. I mean, with three justices we appointed to the Supreme Court uh, sent Roe versus Wade to the ash heap of history where it belongs. But I, I just simply, uh, I reject the notion, uh, now embraced by the former president, that the Supreme Court returned the question of abortion to the states only. They returned the question of the states and the American people. And one of the things our administration did uh, with, with consistency was, was uh, try to end late-term right. abortion in America. You know, while half of the states have advanced strong pro-life protections already, uh, more than half of the country, Democrats still defend abortion on demand all the way up to the moment of birth. It's so, one of the reasons why when I was running for president today, I, I, I believe we ought to have a minimum national standard uh, restricting abortion after 15 weeks, the point that a, that an unborn child is capable of pain, and and candidly, right. that that's more the that's more the standard among most Western European countries. Today, most European countries, where I, I just returned from yesterday, uh, you know, greatly limit abortions after 15 weeks, and many after 12 weeks. American law at the national level today, Griff, is more in line with China and North Korea and Iran. And I, I was and disappointed you put, you put that, in uh, that my former running mate essentially retreated on a I, commitment I, uh, to the right to life at the national level. And I, I hope and pray that he, he comes back to that passion for life that defined well, our administration. Let me ask you this, and, and thank you, Mr. Vice President. Your time is valuable. We've enjoyed having you here. But I, I want to get to this point because a lot of pro-life People are watching this now, and, and the question is simple. Can you in good conscience vote in November for Donald Trump as president if he doesn't change his position on this? Well, let me, let me be very clear. While I've, I made it clear a while back that I, I won't be endorsing my former running man, I, I would never vote for Joe Biden. Uh, I'm a, I'm a pro-life American. But would you but vote I, I, look, for I'm, I'm Donald keep Trump? My, because yeah. I, here's, you write about courage, the moral courage and weakness. And yet, I don't see how you could say that you would vote for him if he doesn't. And you say in your piece that you're prayerful for him, that he'll change his position. But if he doesn't, if this is the track that Donald Trump's going to take, and he's not going to support your call that time has come for the minimum national standard of 15 weeks, can you vote for him? Well, like most Americans, my, my vote is private, and I'm going to keep it that way, and I'll vote my conscience. But... But let me say, I do pray for the president. It's one of the ways I ended that op-ed. I, 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 I pray that he will uh, return to that passion for life and recognize that while the states have a vitally important role and we all need to support measures to defend the unborn at the state level, I truly hope the president will return to that commitment that we had in our administration to end late-term abortion in the country, and uh, I'll continue to advocate that every day. The op-ed is up at New York Times. You can go and read it if you want. Former Vice President Mike Pence, thank you for your time. Have a great weekend. Thank you, Griff. Hi, everyone. I'm Brian Kilmeade. I want you to do me a favor. I want you to click to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page. This is the only way that I know for sure that you're not going to miss any great commentary, any great news bites, any great interviews coming your way on Fox. You can get it all here on YouTube. So subscribe right now.